Testing one, two, three. Let's see if the microphone is working tonight. Yeah, it sounds like it is. Okay, so... This should be a pretty good quality stream tonight. I got the uh, DASNY 2K action cam plugged in with HDMI to the capture card, so we should have a nice, crisp 60 FPS stream. Woo! Let's see if I've got everything I'm going to need tonight. I guess we'll find that out. So we may be needing, I don't know what we're going to need to get this box open. We got the trusty box opener, a couple different types of pliers, nice high speed screw buster, and if all else fails, I may have to go get the pry bar, but we will find that out. So this is a, at least what's supposed to be in the box, is a Packard Bell. Or Packard smell, as some people call them. PB 686, which is not a 686 <laughs> processor. is the what's supposedly this machine doesn't work I don't know let's see how the uh, shipping was done on this oh well, it's got some bubble wrap here it looks like like we've got the feet all there. Oh boy. We've got a letter here. I bought this at an auction so I have no idea what the previous owner may have on the hard drive. Well that should be interesting. The little uh, a little note. Where's the camera at? Little note the seller left. Supposedly that's the original keyboard, we shall see, it looks like the uh, keyboard for my uh, PB500. Kind of nice when sellers leave notes, I don't, because I figure nobody's really going to care what I have to say when I sup, ship them the item. But. Okay, so, so far it seems to have made it in transit. So let's get the camera a little bit closer here. Oops. 
come on. I just zapped the camera with static and it went out. Come on, turn on. There we go. No? Hang on just a second. I'm rebooting the camera here. Jeez. Gotta love live streams. Come on, camera. There we go. Jeez. So what happens when you zap stuff with static? Packard Bell Legend, I guess that would be Legend 1. Really not in too bad of shape. Okay, let's put this guy back up here without zapping him with static again. Let's put this at the lower shelf here. Okay. There are screws in the back. I'll give a shot of the back real quick before I take it apart. We've got a pier, what appears to be a VGA, and I'm going to guess a CGA combo video card there. Uh, that's what I'm guessing that's going to be. We'll find out. A little bit of dust in the fan there, but that's to be expected. Looks like we've only got one screw holding it in. And it is a Phillips, so I am prepared. <laughs> see what kind of interesting funness is in here Power switch felt a little sticky there. I wonder if that's all that was wrong with it. Wouldn't that be funny? Okay, so I may have to get a pry bar. It just seems like the uh, seems like the case is stuck here. This top should just slide right off, but it's not doing the slidey thing. And I'm just kind of bending the hell out of the metal here. Top should just slide forward and pop. Mm. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Oh well. High treason. <laughs> you know. This case actually kind of looks a little tweaked back here so maybe that's why it's not wanting to maybe that's why it's not wanting to come off I don't know I got all the screws out there's only well there's only one screw holding it in and it wasn't even holding it in it wasn't even screwed in all the way oh okay yeah that's why there's screws on the side the bottom on the bottom lip. If I get it in the right. Oh, great, I'm going to need to get another tip. That's what she said, right? Uh, of course, it's got to be a smaller Phillips head than a normal. 
those songs would be, so I guess we'll have to do this the, the hard way to get out the, out the fine tips here. I may have to go around and get another uh, other screwdriver here. Dang. No, that's working. Yep, I should have looked. There were screws on the side. Who would have thought it? There may not be screws on the side when I'm done. Just saying. Because they seem a little redundant. on the radio wanna be with you all night close to midnight seems like the radio station plays better music at night than they do during the day okay now let's see if it slides <laughs> off look at that oh A dislodged card. Oh, we do have a hard drive in it. Cool. Yeah, it's an I, that looks like an IDE controller there, and it is an IDE. Well, it says Winchester on it, but it's not an MFM drive. I'm kind of curious if that. Boy. If, if you guys could have smell-o-vision, this is like, it's got kind of that vintage, musty electronic smell to it. What's going on, Russick? Yeah. So it looks like they've got a little... I've got a little plastic uh, clip thing back here that holds the card in, which obviously didn't do its job. Western Digital Corporation, copyright 1988. This motherboard has a second ISA slot right above the riser slot. Let me see if I can get the camera in here for a shot. I run this camera off battery. I charged it before I started the stream, but if it dies, then I'll plug up the, uh, well, I'll, I'll plug up my other camera. As you can see, there's a, if I get some light on it there. Let's see, there's another, uh, let me get the flashlight here. All the glare. See, there's another ISA slot right above that RISA slot right there, which is kind of interesting. It almost kind of makes me think that's where the uh, ID controller should have went. It's kind of interesting. You can see how clean it is in here, too. Well, that wonderful RAM there probably isn't going to focus, but I'm not, I think this is a fixed focus camera. It's got a Oak Technologies chip there. Lots of uh, clock crystals there, dang. Quality control pass, quality check, whatever that is. Uh, Intel chip. 
doesn't look like a math coprocessor. That must be the keyboard controller there. These motherboards, they kept the keyboard on the front. So that would make sense that that's the keyboard controller. I'm kind of curious as to what uh, what uh, brand of processor is in this. If it's Intel or if it's AMD, that could be kind of an interesting... My guess is it's an AMD probably. Because a lot of these budget systems just used AMD. Because they were cheaper, but... The back of that case is just a little... A little bit tweaked, probably my fault. Now let's see if we can get the old uh, video card out of the way, and then we'll have a look at the uh, processor here. Yeah, that's been in there for a while. <clears throat> Uh -huh. Dummy, if you pull the right screw out, you'll be able to pull the card out. I've got the screw right under it. Although that screw might have actually been holding it in as well. There we go. There we go. Look how much easier that comes out when you get the right screw. There we go. No math coprocessor, dang. Not that I need one, but <coughs> yeah, this is actually an Intel chip. Get the... See, that was that's definitely an Intel chip, and it is a. Uh... 12 megahertz, so it's not like they stuck a 16 or something in there and just underclock it. It is definitely a genuine 12. There you go, high treason. Sys chipset, look at that. Here we go. Phoenix Technologies BIOS is right there. 1988. 8788. There we go. Looks like we got some dash 10 RAM. That's probably what 100 nanosecond. And we got uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five ISA slots on that riser there. That's kind of interesting that they got that riser back here too. I mean that uh, <clears throat> slot one, not riser slot right there. That Western Digital, it's kind of cool. Well, no, actually it's a Seagate drive. I was going to say it's Western Digital drive, but no, it's a Seagate. Was that ST157? So that's probably 50 meg, probably. I doubt that'd be 150 meg, but I, I'm guessing 50 meg. Probably. This might be a uh, candidate for some uh, memory expansion cards. I think I've got a bunch. Okay, well... Seems like the system is pretty clean, so. <clears throat> oh boy. I think I'm going to leave the hard drive in place. I don't see a reason to pull it out. Got a little bit of dust on the floppy drive, but. Just take care of that real quick. And uh, I probably don't have a can of air at hand.
There we go. That's the can of air for right now. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and put this guy back in. Holy crap. Yeah, you think this card just came out of here. It'd just go right back in, but... Doggone it. This does look like a standard AT, uh, yeah, AT power supply. Okay, where's the freaking pin at? Oh, that's kind of weird. It's like pushed over a little bit. way <clears throat> For some reason this IO this thing is bent back here that might be why that card popped out yeah, but this thing took a hit in shipping yeah that should be fun to fix Sometimes all you need is just a good old tap. And then things just go right on in. Okay. So unless the power supply is fried, I don't really see any reason why this shouldn't turn on. Now the power switch was a little sticky when I first pushed it there. Maybe that's all that was wrong with it. Okay. So the guy said it wouldn't turn on at all. I thought it might have been a power supply, and I thought, well, I can fix that. Okay, let's see if some magic smoke. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely does not turn on. Dang. Okay. The color code looks right for a standard AT on the motherboard. So that'd be good enough at least for a test to uh, plug another one in. I just put a, uh, I just put a, uh, what was it, a 30, was it a 3550K in mine? And I've got it overclocked to 4.5 right now in my Linux video editing box. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to have to find a power supply. too soon. Those colors are wrong. Those colors are ding dong dang wrong. Unless white is not the same thing on theirs as it is on here. I don't yellow is twelve volt positive. That should be that should be right. Power good power good and that's in the wrong that's in a different place they got the the red and the blacks are, are basically in the same place but they've got the they've got a couple of the other pins switched around down in there don't got it yeah, I'm gonna pull the power supply out and just have a look inside of it it does not unfortunately turn on I guess I could unplug it from the motherboard god I'd hate that this motherboard was fried that would be a deal breaker there that would be... I suppose it could be one of the drives that's shorted too I should uh, I should unplug all of these isolate the power supply And that uh, kind of curious if that floppy drive is a 720 or a 1.4. It's got a uh, an adapter card down here. Okay, so that's not even plugged in. Let's see if the power supply turns on by itself. No. Okay, so at least we know it's not something on the motherboard that's shorting it out. Or the drives or anything like that. I'll just leave that on there while I'm draining the... While I'm doing this, let those capacitors drain a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to say someone has suspected the power supply before because it looks like one screw's missing. supply for my PB50 might might be the same maybe that would be worth uh, digging out and putting in here nothing else for a test like that looks like it uses a standard uh, where's the camera at uses the same kind of a switch that your case case would normally have except they got it mounted back in here instead of uh, at the front of the case but it's just the same kind of a switch but maybe the switch is bad I mean that would be nice if the switch was bad screw right here sandwiching the two halves together. That's kind of funny. I 
Hey, it's a Samsung power supply. There we go, Samsung Electronics. Come on, I can't. Inspected. What is the inspected date? I have no idea. The inspected dates in in Chinese or Japanese or, I guess Korean. If it's a Samsung, it'd be a that'd be a Korean Korean stamp there. supply a little made a little differently than they make them now they got glue on the top of those caps but they're not blown these ones right here those aren't blown Of course, what's sad is that when these power supplies don't work, it's never the fuse is blown in. You know? <laughs> I'll have to go get my. Uh, I'll have to go get my multimeter. I want to check that switch to see if it's got. Continuity. I will be right back, guys. Okay. Okay, let's see if this bugger has any continuity. Where are those going? going down to the circuit board somewhere under there. Okay, let's quote turn it on. Not sure if I can be able to check continuity on right there or not. Might have to go blue to blue to uh, brown here. Of course, I got to slip off. Let's 
It's weird. It made con it made uh, continuity when I first did it there, and now it's not. But it is it is just it is the exact same. Uh, it is the same switch. It's in a the front in front of a uh, AT case. They just have the wire soldered directly to the to the little pins there instead of you know the, using those uh, little clip things. Okay, let's see if I can get to one of these other wires here. I yeah, probably I think it'll be easier to take the switch out. It looks like cuz I can't get to the bottom wires without things being a pain in the butt. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> that just uh that just came out of there. Look at that. That's nice. Uh, yeah, I might hit it with contact cleaner. If the con if the if the contacts are shot though, then it ain't gonna do much good. I gotta see if that if I'm I'm not sure if I'm testing it right though. I mean, nothing in this power supply looks bad, although that doesn't mean anything. But it doesn't look like something you know went up and went up in flame. Let's just turn that on. It should be brown to brown and blue to blue, I would think. Can't really seem to get a good uh, a good bite on that for some reason. Oh, I see why they've got a bunch of uh, red uh, red glue or something around there, right where the right where the terminal goes into the switch. They've got a there's like some red glue. I don't know if that's I don't know if they did that so the terminals wouldn't break or maybe that was to hold the insulation on while they shrunk it. I don't know.
unfortunate. I go down to the to the bottom of the lower circuit board there. Or do they? Wait a minute here. Let's make sure that they're not going into that top one. Oh, wait a minute here. Okay. Okay, they're going in right up here. They are going in right there. I see it. Well, that would make it easier, obviously, to test it. <coughs> I wonder where the other brown wire is going now. Let's see. That's going... Okay, so that is going to the... looks like it's going to the... I mean, that would make sense. One's coming from here, going into the switch. These are hot switches, so... And it comes out of the switch into the... There's a connector on the underside of this that's... It's going into... Okay. So let's just see here. If I... If I stick it back here... <laughs> this one should be the same, right? It is. Okay. Okay, so that side of the switch is good. Okay. Saw that blue wire going in up here. I guess I thought I did. Let me look again here. Yeah, it's going to those two there. Okay. So we got that. Okay, so it looks like the switch is good. Unfortunately, <clears throat> unfortunately, the switch is good. Dang. Can I take this board? I want to look at the... This I'll, do, I'll do a continuity check across the fuse here, see if it's any good. I'm sure it is. It's <laughs> the fuse never blows on this stuff. And that's just fine. So not the fuse. Dang. I don't see anything burning here though, unfortunately. It's not like it's like just standing out like a sore thumb and saying, here I am, here's the bad component. I do have that one do have that one blue capacitor right there. That's for uh, surge protection. I suppose that could be bad. I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll put the cover back on and uh, we'll put it back together and I'll just uh, power it up and I know it's I know there's no power because the fan doesn't spin the fan is not seized but I guess we'll just see if anything comes out of it at all <laughs> maybe it'll have like 0.3 volts. This could be a uh, this could be a tricky proposition to fix because I'm not sure how it's going to be how it's going to be to find a, a working power supply. But I 
I probably can just rewire um, the standard AT because really all I have to do is to move the the color the wires around a, a little bit and uh, it probably that should work. Heck, I could just splice the connector over actually. Because I think other than other than anything, I mean, it looks like a it looks like a standard AT power supply. Other than the fact it's got this little knockout over here for the uh, for the power switch to live, but it looks like just the the size of it looks like a generic uh, standard AT. <laughs> Watch, I'll put this back together and it'll just work. <laughs> And I don't know if that voltage regulator. I mean that uh, could be a bad regulator, and it could be uh, could be that big transformer that said high voltage. That could be fried. Well, it doesn't look bad. Could be the um, the rectifier. I wouldn't put it past the rectifier being bad. Let's, uh, let's hook some power up to this and we'll check the voltages coming out of it real quick. I don't expect a whole lot. You know, the, the light does flicker a little bit when I plug that in as if I'm plugging in a power supply and it would make me think it's got life. Leave it switched on here. And... And my guess is no. There's not going to be any power coming out of this power supply, but nope. Nope. It is totally dead. It is totally dead. 12 volt and 5 volt are both dead, and there's nothing coming out of that. So. Well, that's a bummer. I'll have to. Uh, I think it. I think it could be rebuilt, though. I'm not sure. It's a matter of figuring out. I'm kind of curious if it has any resistance across the outlet. Uh, let me see here. That's not the right scale. Let's try. I'm just kind of curious if it has any resistance across that. Take it up to 200 million on the scale here. Yeah, we got some resistance. Make sure it's not just the wires here. <laughs> There's that other AT power supply. See, what I need to do is I need to compare these. I suppose we could have a blown, not necessarily blown, but a bad. Uh, 
bad filter capacitor. I mean, you've got an open capacitor, either the filter or something else. I'm kind of curious as to what this one has. I know this one works. Let's see here. And it's yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, maybe we have a. I don't know. I wonder if it could be a bad solder joint. I don't know, I have to take that thing apart. See this this working if I keep the thing on there. You can see the meter. This is this this one's a working AT power supply. Well I just lost it. I wonder if the capacitor might have charged up. Hmm. Well, I suppose that I suppose that filter capacitor might still be charged. Wish it was the fuse. That would be nice. See, I think that's just the. I think that's just the wires. Because if I touch the wires, I got point nine. <coughs> that's just the resistance of the wires. Well, so that doesn't really tell me anything, though, because it, it could be the filter capacitor's charge, and that's why I'm getting it. I don't know. Let's see here real quick. I'm going to look at something here. Why is it using that for the speakers? I don't. That's kind of weird. Okay, never mind. Frickin' Windows 10 had the speaker set up for the frickin' microphone. I I I just I just can never get Windows. I just can never get Windows 10. shouldn't listen to that. Now I'll just shrink that for right now. Okay. Um, Check, I'm going to check that uh, <clears throat> rectifier and see. I'm going to check this capacitor too. Real quick here, see if it's anything interesting.
So that rectifier is up in here. It seems to have some resistance there. And it's not shorted. Okay, so that, I think I think that's okay. It's not shorted. I hear the weather alert going off on the radio. There must be something interesting somewhere. Maybe it's just a test since it's Friday. Well, I'm going to say this is just a dead power supply, and uh, I kind of suspected that going into it. That little one seems to be open. There's another little capacitor, little blue capacitor down under here. The underside of that board. That guy seems to be open there. Hmm. I mean, that could be the problem because these are these are for surge protection. So I could see those. I could see one of those being popped and uh, not allowing juice to flow through it. That seems to be completely open. There's no resistance across that little guy at all. Hmm. There's another one. There's two of them right there, okay. And there might not supposed to be any, I'm just kinda guessing here. I'd have to get I'd have to desolder these and really test them. Dang. Okay, well, I think what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to, since I'm kind of at a, uh, since I'm kind of at a loss here with being able to get this thing running tonight, I think I'm going to end the stream, and then I'm going to, I'm going to get this cleaned up and then I'm going to start another stream because I'm in the mood to do some gaming tonight so you guys don't don't go anywhere unless anybody has an idea Yeah, and they and they might be. I don't really remember. They all seem to be open though. And that might be, and that might be okay. I'd have to. Uh, <laughs> I'd have to brush up on those things to be perfectly honest. Sad because nothing in this power supply seems like it went it went boom or burned up or nothing nothing's discolored in there. Something must have just I don't know. Something must have just popped somewhere. Could be uh, could be one of these resistors down here too. One of these one of these carbon not carbon. Um, Oh, I can't think of the name of them. Ceramic resistors. Actually, now that I look at that. Ooh. 
Yeah. Yeah, actually. That's... Yeah, that's what it is. One of those carbon resistors is, is black as black as sin. Let me see if I can get the camera on that guy. It's actually got a crack in it. I don't know if I can get the camera to start washing out. See that right there? He's not supposed to be that toasty black. It used to be blue. That guy right, right down there. Right there, that guy. He's supposed to be blue like that one right next to it there. Uh, but that's the problem because there's actually, there's actually a crack across it. It looks like going this way. And it looks like the center of it's got like a little something sticking out of it there. Can't even really see the the uh, the lines anymore on it there. That's what the problem is. I, I'll bet money if I replace. Well, I shouldn't say that. I was gonna say I bet money if I replace that it'll fix it. But I mean that could have happened because of something else that shorted too. But that is something that would happen. I you find that on on uh, stereo receivers too that won't power on. Pull out forty six. Yes, I actually am. I am. I'm, uh, I'm not sure which one though. Maybe I'll pull out my CTX. Let's see which one's easier to get to. Let me see if I can uh, get down in the hair real quick. I just want to see if this has anything. Yeah, that looks completely open. Okay, so that's going to be the mission to extract that bottom PCB out of there. And I can get a a little bit closer inspection of that of that. It's probably a carbon film resistor. That happens that happens on stereo receivers too. Those things, the uh, amp shorts. You know, you get one of those. Uh, th there was actually a couple of those that were blown on that Fisher receiver or Fisher amp. Although they weren't, actually they weren't blown. They were just discolored because they got extremely hot when the, when the, uh, the uh, couple of the MOSFETs shorted out. Because it sent like 60 volts through there. <laughs> but, yeah, I think, I think this can be salvaged though. If I can replace that. Hopefully, the, hopefully on the underside the lines are 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 there enough to where I can actually see what the value of that was. That's the thing I hate ordering just a single resistor like that from Mauser because when you got to order, you got all that shipping crap. Maybe I can find one. On, well, eBay would have shipping too. I mean, it's like five bucks for a resistor that could be shipped in the frickin' envelope, you know. But that's how these companies get you. Get these screws put back in here so I don't lose them. I think I already did lose one. Um, yeah, no bother. I'll uh, I'll find that later. Okay, so I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna shut the stream down right now, and then I'll uh, I'll set something else up up here. I'll get this cleaned up. But uh, I think this is going to work once I get this guy taken care of. 
I think uh, I think this is going to work. I, I, hopefully. So I'm just going to kind of set that right back in here. And I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And uh, I will be back here maybe about five or ten minutes or so. So hang tight. And uh, hopefully this uh, capture card will like the lower resolutions. If not, um, we may have to do something that's at least... 640-480 gaming resolution, which might require more like a, a Pentium of some sort, but I might, th I might throw a Pentium up here and it would just have a little more power, but anyway. Alright guys, see you in a little bit.